going shalom on my own. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elder apostle, to the great millstone, to the teacher and real world, and shalom to the saints of Islam on the two principles. Shalom. So, as y'all can see on the screen, um, I have a couple of pictures that are uh, presented. And, you know, these are basically my father, my grandfather, and my great grandfather. Also, you have my mom here in the picture. And what I want to go into in this video is um, is the fact that, you know, in, in, in these pictures, you can see that there is four generation of Israelite men that do not necessarily look like a so-called Negro, Latino, or, or Native American. Um, so, as it also says in the, um, in the book of Romans, so I want to start off with myself first, because people might ask, like, hey, but how do you know that you are an Israelite? <clears throat> Romans 8 and 16 says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. So, to get a better understanding of what that spirit is, is actually referring to, I want to go to John chapter 6, verse 63, where it says, the, and, and these are the, um, let me see, <coughs> and these are the words of Yahweh Shai, where he says, it's the spirit that quickeneth, you know, which, which means break to bring back, uh, to bring out, uh, to make a life, Salakia, the flesh profited nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So, going back to Romans 8 and 16, it means that the words of these scriptures, they bear witness with the spirit that we have as Israelites, that we are the children of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. And, um, of course, the scriptures talk about how you know, our people went into captivity, you know, multiple times. But the captivity that I'm actually referring to is the captivity of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, that speaks about the um, transatlantic slavery that took place in 1619 and so forth. Um, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, which the word Egypt uh, you know, is a reference being made to bondage because if you go back into the book of um, the book of Exodus, you can read about how we, as a people, served you know for more than four hundred years uh, under the Egyptians. So the word Egypt, you know, is a reference being made to being in slavery. Um, but this time, you know, that will be by ships. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond man and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. And that word buy goes back to the word redeem, um, because nobody would take us out of the situation that our people will be in. You know, that's going to happen when our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai comes back. You know, and, and he's going to, you know, put us, you know, um, back in a rightful position. You know, being the rulers upon this earth. But I don't want to digress. So uh, what I wanted to you know, talk about is the fact that, yeah, the scriptures talk about that there had been slavery. Um, and the specific slavery is referring to the transatlantic slavery. But if you would look at me, you know, you would not assume that, you know, I'm a, uh, uh, I'm going to put it because, through the spirit, I believe that I'm a, I'm a Native American, I'm a Gadite. But you would not believe that by looking at me, I would go back to the, you know, to the uh, typical looking Israelites. You see, and, and one of the ways that we are able to determine, you know, who the Israelites are, is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. That does talk about the transatlantic slavery that took, that took place, man. How the people from West Africa were shipped, you know, to America. And, you know, their names will be changed. It will be called uh, African-American. Um, they will be called so-called Negroes, etc., etc., etc. You see? But there are other ways for a man that does not look like a typical Israelite 
you know, to uh, understand that he actually is an Israelite. You see, so this is Daniel, chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So there are certain men, you know, that look like the, the, the heathen nations, you know, you would not esteem them to be Israelites, but because they have the understanding of the scriptures that, you know, bears witness with their spirit, you know, that they are actually the children of Yahweh Bashem Yisrael, that they are Israelites. You see, so <coughs> also going to um, Revelation, the, what is it, the fifth chapter? We read it yesterday uh, in the camp. Let me go to the Revelation 7 verse 9. I believe it's Revelation 7 and 9. Mm. Yeah, this is Revelation chapter 7 and 9. After this I beheld a low, a great multitude, which no man could number, all nations and kindreds, and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So, this shows you that there's going to be a, uh, a great number of people that does not belong to the 144,000 um, elect men, but they will receive salvation. And these people, they will be uh, taken out of, you know, their, 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 their lands and the countries where, where they are at right now, which could be China, you know, which could be Japan, which could be the Middle East, which could be Africa, you know, which could be Russia, um, you know. So it don't matter in this day and age uh, what you look like, man. Um, and this is not a video that I want to make to um, basically get rid of a certain insecurity or something. This is a video that you know I feel like you know I I, I have to make. Um, because there are, you know, Israelites out there <coughs> that, that, you know, might doubt, you know, uh, you know, their belief, like, hey, you know, myself, I don't look like so good Negro, Latino, or Native American, but I do feel that, that there's a certain attraction towards this, this, this belief or towards the doctrine, you know, that is being pushed forth by the other apostle GMS on down. Because <coughs> I myself, I also had, you know, the, uh, that same feeling, <clears throat> you know, um, I was asking at a certain moment of time in my life, you know, before the proof, you know, I asked if the Most High would exist. I said, if God, if you exist, show me the truth and I'm, you know, I want to give my life to you. <clears throat> and I've heard brothers, you know, uh, ask for similar things. And, you know, lo and behold, they also are in the truth, man. And I'm standing with such men also in the camp. You know, that have asked for a similar thing. But prior to coming in the truth, the Most High, you know, he, he, uh, he basically, you know, uh, allowed me to go uh, back and forth, as it also says. In, uh, in yeah, this is uh, Ephesians 4 and 14, that we henceforth be no more children, thus to and fro, be carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And this is something that we that we hope to achieve or have received, you know, through the through the foundation that we have, you know, on Yahweh Shai and, and the things that are being uh, taught, you know, by the by the elders, other apostles, the elders, the bishops, and you know the other brothers that are pushing this forth, man. That uh, whatever is being thrown at us concerning a different philosophy. That you know we're not going to be swept by it, man. That we're not going to be deceived and follow after it. And right before the truth, the most I did allow me to be tossed to and fro between certain with doctrines. But it came a time that I started to realize, like, yeah, you know, God, God must exist. You know, there must be a higher power because I see all sorts of evil, man. The music industry is pushing forth a certain salvation with demonic type of things. You know, it's like, hey, then, then, then God must must exist, man. Then I started slowly but surely um, 
look up certain pictures with, 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 with verses on them, you know, that really connect with my spirit and how I felt. And then I discovered on Instagram, actually quite funny, um, that the real people, the real Jews, you know, as, as it was being said in that post, are actually, you know, the so-called Negroes. Then I told my dad that as well. And then he told me that he has a colleague at his job <coughs> that has a certain similar belief. And that man, he, uh, he follows the doctrine of Jews to see. So I linked up with him a couple of times and went to the basically the church of, G, of, of, of GOCC because they do gather in a building. Went there a couple of times, but it didn't feel right with my spirit because I had a certain feeling, a, a certain zeal towards the most high and really wanting to serve him. But the doctrine that was being taught during the times that I was there wasn't talking about, you know, Israelites you know, also looking like these heathen nations. You know, they was predominantly talking about, you know, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So I felt left out. I was like, hey, you know, this is not the place where I would, you know, feel at ease, where I would have found the place where I do belong. <clears throat> so then after a while, you know, at MMA practice, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, the, the brother, you know, from, uh, from a camp that I, you know, sent in the in, in the camp with as well. Um, you know, I met him there, and, he, and we got to talking, and, and eventually, you know, he shared his, uh, his, his his YouTube channel with me, and we got a little bit of talking here and there on the phone. Um, you know, I greeted him with shalom during uh, during the anime, and he was like, "Hey, be quiet, be quiet." So he he he, he saw. You know something that I did not see myself, and he said, "Hey, you, hey, you could be an Israelite. You, you, you don't have to be an Edomite. You could be an Israelite." And then, across my whole body, man, I felt like tinglings. I was like, "Whoa!" And when I felt that, I was like, "Hey, this man is right, man." You know, it instantly felt like, "Hey, this is this is the thing that I was looking for." So, a while later. I decided to, to to come by the camp, and you know I actually uh, you know witnessed the brothers you know going to the scriptures um, for the first time, and I believe they also spoke about Esau, you know, so a white man being destroyed and things like that. But it didn't, you know, it, it to me it didn't matter what they said. Like you know, it it, it was like whatever, you know, the, the the way that I feel, you know, the 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 zoo that I have. I don't know where it came from, but I didn't feel that same way. And, you know, long and behold, man, right now I'm teaching, I'm pushing the word for Alba Shemir Shai, you know, being an Israelite foreigner. So, hey, we are Jazai, you know, this, this video is going to be very edifying for those that you know, look like the heathen nations, that don't know, you know, whether they could be Israelites, yay or nay. Um, you know, it's all up to Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, whether he's whether he's able to open up your understanding and he's able to, you know, uh, persuade you otherwise, um, thinking that you are a heathen, because you don't have to be a heathen, man. If this if this if this doctrine that is being taught by you know Elder Apostle Jesus and Down is is messing with you, man, and you, and you don't have any trouble, you know, with what's going to happen with the so called white man and what's going to happen with these heathens as well. You know what's gonna happen uh, um, in in the times ahead. Okay, then hey, it, it, then it might be for you, man. You know, then it might be that you are an Israelite. You know. So before going on, I still want to continue. You know, showing these pictures. So yeah, here we have me. You know, um, I look like your so-called typical, you know, Edomite. Um, I get a lot of questions. Where I'm from, you know, some people might say hey, you're from the Scandinavian countries. Yesterday, I heard uh, a woman say that you know you're from Albania or something. Mm. Born and raised in, uh, in in the Netherlands, you know, but you know my spirit goes back to being an Israelite. Um, so here we have my dad, and it's quite funny because 
um, the time that I spoke spoke with the brother, you know, and that I thought I was scared, I showed him my, my, my father and things like that. So told that my dad is really into this dead eye, you know, type of uh, statues, clothing, like as you can see on the on the screen, he has, he has the shirt, he has the small statues, he has a, I think a wind catcher or a dream catcher, he has them as well. So that was for me like like evidence, like amen, you know, it's crazy how the spirit of my father also bears witness that, you know, it goes back to God. So, hey, but the most important thing, even though, you know, I could be a different, different tribe, the most important thing is that I'm Israelite. Whatever I am is going to be revealed in the kingdom. But right now I claim God. And so here's my father. So you have me, my father and my mother. Um, this is my grandpa. Uh, I showed this picture recently to uh, to the brother. This is a picture of a picture. <clears throat> you know, and they said, "Hey, man, you know your your, your grandpa. He, he really looks like the one of the northern tribes. The way that he sit, the necklace, the type of things. You know." <clears throat> grandpa at an older age really has a dead eyed feature which he actually got from his mother um which you know was supposed to be here <coughs> which is my great grandmother and this is my great grandfather you know, and if you look at him it's quite funny because i think me and my dad we're the ones that look the most you know, like your typical uh, edomite because my great grandfather, I didn't see no Edomite in him. You know, uh, I showed the brothers as well, and they said, "Yeah, no, nah, man, he kind of don't look like an Edomite." Same thing for my my grandfather. You know, I don't see no Edomite in him neither, man. But yeah. Um. So yeah, this is Numbers chapter one and eighteen. And it says, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after the families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward by their pole. So the scripture shows you that the way that um, your race is determined is according to your father's seed. So you are what your father is. You see, so the reason that I brought out this, this, uh, this verse is because all oh, here are Israelite men, except here for my mom, which, you know, most likely an Edomite. But these are all Israelite men that over generations laying down with Edomite females, you know, produce children that look like Edomites. You know, the um, the daughter and the, uh, well, basically the, the, the sister and the, the brother of my father, they also look like Edomites, man. You know, so it's quite funny that my aunt is actually an Israelite, but also looks like a, like an Edomite. You know, it's quite funny. So you really start to look different at certain people. You know, questioning whether, whether your uncle, you know, that has a relationship with, you know, your father's sister. Uh, when you look at him, you're like, hmm, could he be? Could he not be? Because he also had certain traits, you know, when I, uh, when I was younger. That I could see in him, but uh, you know, he passed away recently. So, it, um, and also concerning my my aunt, it turned out that you know, a couple of, a couple of years ago, it turned out that you know they became a uh, Jehovah Witness people, man. And that's quite funny because then still the zeal is there, but not according to knowledge. You know, because they don't have that right understanding that's been given unto them by the Heavenly Father. For you know who they should truly worship, because the scripture also says the deceived and the deceiver are his. So it was the will of the Most High for my aunt to be deceived <clears throat> and basically worshiping idols, man. <clears throat> um. So this is First Samuel chapter sixteen and verse seven. This was concerning uh, Samuel anointing uh, King David. You know basically become the next king after King Saul. Um, 
but they was like, man, this, 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 this he's just a, you know, a shepherd, man. He's just, you know, keeping the sheep. He's not that tall. He's not that strong. He's not that big. But this is, you know, what the, what the Most High said unto Samuel, man. This is First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. But the Lord Yahweh said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord Yahweh seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord Yahweh looketh on the heart. You see? So when, when Samuel did see the brothers of King David, he was amazed. He's like, yeah, man, they... But the most of us was not with that, man. He, he, he didn't choose King David, you know, for the way that he looked. He, cho he chose him because of his mind, you know? Because the word heart goes back to the word lap, which is mind. You know, does he have that right spirit within him? You see, and that's the same thing, you know, with 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 with, you know, certain brothers and sisters uh, that might not be yet in the truth or that are uh, looking for answers. You know, don't look at the outward appearance, man, but look on the heart, look on the mind, look on the spirit, look on the zeal. See, that's why it also says in John chapter 7, verse 24, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You see, and how do we judge righteous? According to the scriptures, man. You know, does, the, does the spirit bear witness? You see? This is Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 9. When heritage is unto me as a speck of bird, the birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to the vowels. So here, you know, is the heritage of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, which are the Israelites compared to a speck of bird. And if you go into that word, <coughs> speckled, it says colored, variegated, speckled. Um, so this means that Israelites in this day and age, you know, and back then also, they, they came in all kinds of different shapes and colors, man. You know, more light skin, darker. Uh, even it was being said of Ephraim that he looked like a cake not turned. You know, which that basically, you know, is like a sort of uh, yellowish, whitish color. You know? <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, man. These are the pictures that I want to show y'all. You know, four generations of um, Israelite men that don't look, you know, like your typical uh, typical Israelites. And it can go really fast, man, because if we go here to the Israelite foreigners, um, for instance, this is, uh, I forgot his name, but this is his father. And his father laid down with an Edomite mom, and they begat him. And then uh, Blake Griffin was his name. Blake Griffin laid down with an Edomite as well, and this is his child. So it can go really fast. But here the question is asked, what do you think would happen after 100 years, 200 years, 300, 400, 500 years? You see, so here, here it says, stop assuming that all of Israel is going to look, look black after thousands of years. Hosea 7 and 8, Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. <clears throat> you see? Which is the thing that I uh, roughly paraphrased, man. But the most I want it to be brought up again. What else do we have? Yeah, man, this is also a beautiful video. Um, let me see. My existence. Now, hear me out. Now this is my brother. Makes sense, we're both white, blonde hair, whatever, what's the big deal? Now this is my mom. It's like, okay, well, she's brown hair, recessive genes. It's still possible. However, this is my dad. So why am I white? Here's a family photo from 2007, in case you don't believe me. There's little me. And yes, my dad is full black. So can someone please explain to me the planet square? Because from my understanding, I should not look like this. Again, why am I white? And I'll be white at that. 
Why am I blonde too? Because that makes no sense. You know how confusing it is when I have to fill out paperwork and there's no other option for the race or ethnicity part? I can't put that I'm black or African American because they'll think that's some sick joke. But when I put white, I feel like I'm lying. Same thing when people ask me where I'm from, because I'm from Israel, right? I have to tell them, you know, I'm from Holland. Wait, here's Drake as well. You know, Drake. Boom. See, so hey, uh, the point of me, like I said already, the point of me bringing out this is, is to show you, man, that not all Israelites, you know, look like you typical Israelites. And this shows you that, you know, four generations Israelite men <clears throat> can also look here and there a little bit different because I look like a, you know, a complete, you know, a typical Edomite. My granddad, he, he, he looked more like, uh, indeed, like a Latino or, you know, like Sicilian, Italian or something. <clears throat> my great grandpa, I don't even know what he looks like. Uh, my father, you know, he has a, you know, he, he has quite a big nose, you know, and that's also one of the traits that I looked at, be like, hey, you know, don't these Gadites have, have, have those type of noses? So, yeah, man. Um, you know, this video was edifying. And with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Double honors to the elder apostles, great millstone, the teacher will well, and Shalom to the sinister action, punished to the sincerity. Shalom.